sigmas. Remember in my video on the Newton's laws of motion, I had told you that uh, the Newton's second law was uh, what? Yes, F equal to mass times the acceleration of that body. Well, I like to leave. The situation is wrong. And uh, whatever questions uh, we have solved so far based on these equations uh, and whatever concepts we look at when we use this equation are all wrong. Just kidding. That is not true. This equation is not wrong. It is just incomplete. And in fact, it is a special case of the Newton's actual second law. And why we are not wrong in using this equation in those problems, we are going to see now. So before we do that, before we look into why we are not wrong, we have to see what Newton's actual second law is. So the correct Newton's second law is that F, the force on the body, is actually equal to the time derivative of P. Here this quantity P is known as momentum. And this momentum is equal to the mass of the body times its velocity. So we are going to get the force as equal to d by dt of the mass times velocity. And here we are going to use the product rule of derivatives. So we would get d by dt of uh, mass multiplied by the velocity plus d by dt of the velocity multiplied by the mass. And now what you have to do is pause this video right here and think about for a moment as to why what we did in our past videos was not wrong. Did you think about it? Okay, now if you were not able to understand why we were not wrong, I, was, I want you to focus on this term of the equation. This term represents the rate of change of mass. That means here how the mass of a body is changing with time. But so far, whatever uh, examples we saw so far, the mass was simply constant. It never changed with time. And that, that's why dm by dt was equal to zero. And if dm by dt is equal to zero, what would we get? We would be left with this term, which is equal to mass times dv by dt. And now you can see why we were not wrong. Because this is simply equal to mass times the acceleration of the body. And we get our own equation f equal to me. But this would not always be true. In this uh, video series on momentum, we are going to see only these kind of uh, problems. I mean, we will see other types of problems also. But there will be some problems will, in which the mass of the body will change with time. And uh, those problems are going to be really, really interesting. In fact, the power of this definition that the force is the time derivative uh, of uh, momentum goes beyond classical mechanics. Actually, this is true even for the special theory of relativity. Now, if you do not know, then I'm, I would like to tell you as a matter of fact that Newton's laws fails for very, very, very high speeds. Speeds which are, which are closer flow to the speed of light. But even when Newton's laws or uh, Newton's uh, equations uh, fails at that speed, this definition of Newton's law is still valid. And that is why this is a very, very important definition of Newton's second law. And from now on, you are always going to remember this. We are not going to say that Newton's second law is equal to 
f equal to m a, but you are always going to say that Newton's second law implies the force is equal to the rate of change of momentum with respect to time. Now here, the definition of force f equal to the rate of change of momentum is true only for a point particle, that is a particle the size of a point. But we know from our daily life uh, experience that no part, no object in this uh, world is a point particle. We always have extended bodies. What do I mean by extended bodies? A baseball is an extended body, or a chair, or a chalk. All these are extended bodies, and these bodies are composed of uh, molecules. Now, these molecules are made up of atoms, which means these are these can also not be considered as point objects. Atom is also made up of uh, particles such as the electron, the proton, or the neutron. Now, this is where this trend ends. This electron can be considered as a point particle. So, basically, you can apply that f equal to the rate of change of momentum to directly to an electron. But you can also apply it to extended bodies, but how can we do that? How can we apply it to the extended bodies? It's a bit different from how we apply Newton's second law, which is the force is equal to the rate of change of momentum to point particles. So that is what we are going to see now, how we can apply or how the Newton's law looks for extended bodies. That is a body which itself is made up of some point particles. For that, we shall draw our old friend, the Cartesian coordinate system. Okay, this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. And let's say there is a body which is made up of many particles, right? And many point particles. Here, I gave you an example of electrons. So different bodies will be made up of such kind of point particles. So let's say our body is made up of such collections of point particles. The distance of the first particle of the body from the origin is R1. That is, this is its position vector. The position vector of the second particle similarly is R2, R3, R4, and so on. So if the body is made up of n particles, Then the position vector of the nth particle would be equal to Rn. Okay, and the masses similarly would be m1, m2, m3, m4, and so on. And the mass of the nth particle would be mn. So this is what we are saying that there is a body which is made up of n particles and uh, the mass of those particles is uh, m1, m2, m3, and the mass of the nth particle would be mn. Now here, this n is just a variable, right? I, instead of n, I could say m, I could say k, I could say i, I could say anything. So here, we are going, going to consider the position of a j particle, right? We are going to first look at only a single particle and then generalize this thing to the other particles because they are made up of the same material so they are going to behave somewhat similarly. So let's say the position of the J particle is Rg and its mass is Mg then what would be the momentum of that particle Pg? The momentum of that particle is going to be equal to obviously mg into rj dot, right? Mass times velocity. That is how we define the momentum. And what would be the force on the jet particle? 
the force on the jet particle is going to be equal to from Newton's second law dPj upon dB. Now this force on the jet particle can be split into two terms. That is, it can be written as Fj internal int plus Fj external. Here, Fj internal is the internal force on that particle. And Fj external is similarly the external force on the particle. And what do I mean by internal and external force? See this, as I told you, this body is made up of some particles. So these particles will also interact amongst themselves. That is, they will also apply uh, forces on each other. That is, let's say if these particles have charges, then they are going to attract each other with the Coulomb's force. Since these particles have masses, they are going to attract each other with the gravitational force. So these particles are going to apply some forces on each other. That is what we call the internal force. So this is a force exerted by the particles of the body on each other. Whereas the external force uh, is the force exerted by an external agent. So this is exerted by an external agent. And what do I mean by external agent? External agent means someone who is not a part of the system or the body. In case, in this case, it is a ball. So if I push the ball from outside, if I apply a force on the ball, then that would be an external force. Whereas the this ball is made up of some molecules, and the molecules, the force that these molecules are exerting on each other, is known as the internal force. So if uh, Fj is equal to Fj internal plus Fj external, that and which is equal to dPj by dt. So what I can write from over here, so let me uh, call this one, equation one, and call this equation two. So from equation one and equation two, you can easily see that we can write the, uh, the F1 internal, plus uh, F1 external is equal to dP1 upon dT. These are all vectors, right? Force is a vector, obviously. So these are all vectors. And similarly, we would get F2 internal plus F2 ex uh, external is equal to dP2 by dT and so on. So for the nth particle, we are going to get Fn internal plus Fn external is equal to dPn by dt. And what we are going to do next is add the uh, equations up, right? So if we add these equations, you can easily see that we are going to get our favorite symbol sigma uh, j equal to 1 to n fj internal plus summation j equal to 1 to n fj external and that would be equal to the sum of uh, from uh, j equal to 1 to n dpj by dt. So I did not do anything but just added the left hand side and right hand side of uh, these equations which I call, call them as three. So I added the left hand side and right hand side of these equations and I got this. Now one thing that you have to know is that 
let's say we have to look at this term force, okay? The sum of the internal forces. So the sum of the internal forces will be uh, will contain of uh, a lot of uh, terms. And uh, let's consider two of those terms. Let's say a particle one and particle two of that body, right? Let's consider the particle one and particle two exerting some force on each other, F. Then from Newton's third law, you know that those forces will always be equal and opposite. That means in this term, if I consider the force due to on two due to one, it would be equal to minus of the force on one due to two. And in this man, and this summation is going to consider, that means this summation is going to contain both of these terms, which are going to cancel out. So this summation will contain the force on two due to one plus the force of one due to two, right? And since F one two is equal to minus of F two one, so we will get this is equal to F two one, right? Minus F two one, right? F12 is equal to minus F21, which is equal to 0. And in this manner, when we get more such terms, we will get F31 plus F13, which is again equal to 0. Right? And uh, if you open this bracket, I want you uh, to try it out yourself as a homework or an exercise. Just open this first summation term, and you will see that all the Terms or that summation is cancelled in this manner due to Newton's third law. And obviously, we are not going to have terms like F11 because a particle cannot exert a force on itself. That doesn't mean anything. So we are not going to have these kind of terms. So what we found from the Newton's third law is that the summation of internal forces is equal to zero. So this sum j equal to 1 to n fj in total is equal to 0. So what we are left with is that the summation from this equation, which I shall call equation 4, right? So from equation 4, you can see what we are left with is uh, the summation of j equal to uh, 1 to n f. Uh, j external is equal to the sum of uh, j equal to 1 to n dp upon dt pj. Now what uh, I'm going to do is use the distributive property of uh, derivatives. So using distributive property which I have taught you in my previous videos, right? You can easily see that if you use the distributive property of derivatives, then you would get f of j external is equal to d by dt of the sum of pj from j equal to 1 to n. So basically what you can do is take this derivative out of the sum or take it inside the sum. That is the distributive property of derivatives and is of the very basic properties of derivatives. And if you have still not understood what I'm saying, then what you do is expand that sum, write out the terms separately and take the derivative inside or take the derivative outside of the sum, you will really understand uh, what I'm doing, right? So try it out yourself, but this is a very easy concept from derivatives. Now this sum of uh, external forces, right? This is the total external force on that body. That means this is equal to the external force on first particle plus the external force of second particle plus the external force of third particle. And in fact, a vector sum, because force is a vector. So let's call this the total external force on the body, which is equal to capital F external, right? And uh, that would be equal to d by dt of, what is this? Yes, that's the total momentum of the body, right? It's a vector sum of the momentum of the first particle plus the momentum of the second particle plus the momentum of the third particle. 
So that is nothing else but the total momentum of the entire body, the net momentum of the body. And here we can see that the Newton's law is the same even for extended bodies. So Newton's law is true for a single particle and it is also true for an extended body, which is fabulous. Now, another concept and very, very important concept of physics is that what if I am not applying any force? Remember what this FX journey was? This was the force with which I was pushing the ball. I cannot find the ball. Yes, here it is. So this F that we had applied earlier is nothing but F external. So that is that was a, if I consider the example of the ball, then F external is nothing but the force with which I am pushing the ball. But what if I'm not pushing the ball? What if F external is zero? If F external, if you put F external equal to zero in the equation we just found, then we would get this is equal to zero. And what whose derivative is zero? We all know that the derivative of a constant is zero, which means that if F external is zero, then P is a constant. And this statement is known as the law of conservation of momentum. And although I have written it in golden color on this screen, it has to be written in real gold because it's just a very, very important law of uh, conservation law of uh, uh, physics and in fact the first conservation law that we are looking into and why it is known as the conservation of law and what does it even mean for momentum to be constant let's say there is a body right this is a ball and it uh, has a momentum right in this direction p1 and i'm not applying any forces on this body so f is equal to zero on this body at all times, right? There's just no force on my body. Then even after some later time, the body's momentum is going to remain P1, right? In the absence of any external forces, the particle's momentum is constant, which means it does not change. And we are going to apply this law in a huge quantity or in this video series on, on the momentum. So to motivate me to create more such fun videos, do subscribe to my channel and do not forget to like this video. I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.